The manipulation of an audience is a very difficult challenge, no matter if it's TV, cinema or internet. The best way to work this out is by using color theory, creating visual aesthetics to trigger emotions on your audience. I'm Jay and today I'm talking about color in films. Let's get rolling, let's get right into it. As you might know, cinema used to be black and white. Yeah, there were no colors. So now that we can use color in films, we all seem to have an obsession with colors. So we see colors every day. Colors can be used to sell things to us, to make us feel a certain way and guide our eyes in ways that we might not even be conscious or even notice. Knowing how to use colors effectively to adjust the mood or an atmosphere, it's really hard for a lot of people to make it work. So I'm going to try to explain in this video how to create pleasant color schemes. This is why, as a storyteller, it is extremely important to understand color and all the different ways that they can be used as a storytelling device. From wardrobe choices and color gels to post-production filters, movie color schemes play a vital role in a director's vision. But how can color tell a story? Well, the simple explanation is because color can affect us emotionally, psychologically and even physically, often without us becoming aware. Color in film can build harmony or tension within a scene or bring attention to certain things. When telling a story, colors can provoke psychological reactions with the audience, draw focus to significant details, set the tone of the movie, represent character traits and more, show changes or arcs in the story. When chosen deliberately, a well-placed movie color palette evokes mood and sets the tone for the film. The three main components of a color are who, which is the color itself, saturation, which is the intensity or purity of the color, and value, which refers to the brightness or the darkness of the color. Many viewers will have predictably similar reactions to certain colors. A strong red color has been shown to raise blood pressure, while a blue color creates a calming effect. Although colors do have associated conventions, it's not dogmatic. There are no absolute rules for color selection. Ultimately, the viewer's reaction to the color is dependent on how it is defined within the film. For example, red is probably the color that we react to the most emotionally. It might represent fear, death, foreshadowing, but can also represent hope, love and sensuality. Color theory should be understood by filmmakers but never seen as a limitation. Although single, recurring colors can hold a deeper meaning. A more fleshed out film palette of colors, also known as color scheme, is most effective in communicating the thematic context. Balanced color schemes refer to the harmonious relationship of colors on a color wheel. And you say, what's a color wheel? Well, a color wheel is pretty much composed of three primary colors, which are yellow, blue, and red. And then you can mix those together to create secondary colors. And you can mix those secondary colors with the primary colors to make even more colors. And that is the full color wheel. None of this matters for what we're trying to do, but it's good to know because we're gonna be referencing back to this. The four most common types of color schemes or color harmonies are monochromatic, analogous, complementary and triadic. Monochromatic is probably the easiest to start with because it involves only one color. This is best for single subjects because it forces the viewer to focus on the details of the image. This color scheme comes in shades of a single color such as red, dark red and pink. They create a deeply harmonious feeling that is soft, quiet and calming. 
like seen in the Grand Budapest Hotel or the Moonrise Kingdom. Matrix is also a very good example of a monochromatic movie color scheme. Nearly every scene set within the world of Matrix has a green hue. Shades of green penetrate everything in a frame to create an unnatural calming effect representative of those asleep inside the Matrix. Analogous colors neighbor each other on the color wheel. This is normally found in nature. The cool thing about this one is that it's easy on the eyes and generally creates a peaceful, comfortable, very relaxing and overall harmonious mood. Complementary colors live opposite each other on the color wheel. They are very, very popular. For example, orange and blue are complementary colors commonly used in many blockbuster films. Michael Bay uses these all the time. It's just naturally pleasing to the eye. But something that people normally don't mention is that you shouldn't use both colors equally. You shouldn't use 50% of one and 50% of the other. You should be using one color predominantly, generally the weakest color, and then using some splashes of the other. The two colors are often associated with conflict, whether internal or external. No matter the color selection, complementary colors combine warm and cool colors to produce a high contrast, vibrant tension in the film. Triadic colors are three colors arranged equally distant around the color wheel. An example, red, blue, and yellow. One color should be dominant and the others used simply to emphasize. Triadic is one of the least common movie color schemes, but it can be striking and vibrant even when the hues are unsaturated and it's best for cartoons or surreal scenes simply because it can really come across as being quite playful. You can see here Superman is wearing a striking red and then using blue and yellow to highlight other elements creating a very pleasant looking result. Discordance is a deliberate choice by the director to deviate from the balanced movie color schemes mentioned above previously to refocus attention. Discording colors can help a character, detail or moment stand out from the rest of the film. Having considered the various components of color theory, we can now look at color selection on a larger scale, not just in a single scene but over the course of the entire story. When a color scheme is often associated with specific character, object, place or theme, it becomes a symbol. This is seen throughout many iconic films, Kill Bill associated with character Orange. When recurring film palettes or colors shift over the course of the film, it often represents a transformation in the character, story or theme. This is a powerful way to subliminally communicate a character or story arc in a visual manner. While many movie color schemes can provoke a universal effect on audiences, there's really no magic bullet or right answer when it comes to selecting your movie color palette. Ultimately, it's up to the filmmaker to define the implications of the film palette. With that said, looking to universal color theory is a very important step. To make things a bit easier, there is a great tool called Adobe Color, where you can play around with the color wheel and have different color combinations, you can move things around and have a feel for different color palettes, and just experiment with color. Another thing that Adobe has done is creating an app called Adobe Capture. You can use it on your phone and walk around taking pictures, and it will tell you the predominant colors of your image. There is so much you can talk about color, but this is getting quite long now, so I hope you learned something about color theory and how you can use them to improve your work, or that at least I just opened a new door for you to explore more on your own. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like, feel free to share it, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Jay, and I'll see you next time.